Jennifer, Negan, thanks for being with us. Uh, Negan, we'll start with you here in studio. Do you think the Trudeau minority government is going to fall anytime soon? Well, not according to what the Bloc says. The Bloc says that uh, they're interested in a partnership and a relationship. I think the Bloc looks to see how much the NDP has been able to achieve with the Liberals and for this very small window of time that the Liberals have left in office and by all accounts will probably either have a leadership change or a government change. Uh, the Bloc probably wants to get some work done, so the Bloc will probably play ball with the government. Jennifer, been a pretty wild week so far, uh, the return to Parliament here. Uh, do you think, though, that we're going to be seeing an election anytime soon? Um, it's hard to say. I think the Liberals at this point will do pretty much anything to avoid that. Um, you know, we saw Jagmeet Singh say that he ripped up the deal, which I don't think anybody really knows what that means because he said the deal is done, but as of today, he went on record to say the deal is very much not done. Um, however, at this point, he's just not getting anything in exchange for keeping the Liberals in power. Um, the Bloc, however, this will be really interesting to see because, you know, the Bloc leader um, has went on record today to say that he's there to serve Quebecers. So what is that going to look like for Canadians across the country to know that essentially the Liberal government is being propped up by a party that cares about one province and one province only? At this point, it kind of just feels like we're patching up the Titanic until the inevitable end. Right. Uh, Negan, while we patch up, uh, there are a few pieces of legislation still going through Parliament, like Bill C-61, the First Nations Clean Water Act. Uh, do you think that some of this stuff is, is, is going to get passed? Oh, I think that for sure. I think it's just too much on the agenda of the NDP to try to get a record going into the federal election. Uh, you can already see the NDP coming out to Canadians and saying, uh, here's our record, and one of the big problems, of course, is that the Liberals really inhabit most of the space of what the NDP historically has done on Indigenous issues. And so what the NDP certainly wants to do is get a win, a several series of wins, and be able to claim that they've advocated for Indigenous communities. So undoubtedly they will encourage the Liberals to pass that uh, water legislation and do it before the end of Parliament. And Jennifer, those are just a couple things. I mean, we're the, it's the $47 billion uh, uh, child welfare reform. There's a lot of stuff out there still. Uh, with everyone, uh, you know, saying they're going to go to the polls or going to continue to threaten to go to the polls, uh, are you expecting anything concrete to come out of this session? I don't think I'm expecting to see anything more concrete in terms of promises. You know, I really was hoping to see that at a drug meet sitting in the NDP at the beginning of this confidence and supply deal. I think there was a real opportunity to highlight reconciliation efforts and to move them forward. You know, we look at the TRC calls to action and last year there were zero completed. So at the end of the day, Indigenous issues seem to be last priority for pretty much everybody. And even in the context of a, a minority government and the potential of an election coming, you know, although there's some big issues on the table right now, at the end of the day, I don't have a lot of hope that that'll even be taken into consideration if an election is triggered. We wanted to touch on something else big here uh, this past week. Uh, Jennifer, we'll start with you because you were there. It, it's been uh, 150 years since Treaty 4 was signed, handing over a large chunk of Manitoba and Saskatchewan to the Crown. Uh, you were out there. Was this reason to celebrate? It's really, it's a really interesting situation for me. And I was actually talking to a band counselor from a nation in Treaty 4 yesterday about it almost being conflicting because there are chiefs that are having that discussion about what, what was the, you know, we know the benefit of the signing of the treaty, but at the end of the day, we're still discussing in modern context whether or not that was the best route and do nations actually want to be a part of that treaty now. And I have a little bit of a, a personal tie to it you know if you look at the treaty four articles you'll see the name charles pratt and that was like my four or five times great grandpa which should surprise nobody that i descended from somebody that was involved at the end of the day given how outspoken and um opinionated i could be but it, it's it's interesting because you think wow it's been 150 years and where are we today and is the spirit and intent of treaty still being honored and you know you go to these celebrations and you hear the speeches you see the chiefs and you can't help but feel the advocacy in the room but then we leave and modern life just continues and the advocacy still continues well Nigan, speaking of modern days you know there's a lot going on with treaty lately when it comes to annuity payments uh, things like cows and plows uh, what do you think the significance is of, of treaty 4 today 150 years later 
Well, I just certainly echo what uh, Jennifer was saying in terms of outstanding claims and related, related to treaty. We are in the first wave, meaning about a year, a year and a half, the very first wave of the impacts of Bill C-15, which is bringing Canadian law in concert with Indigenous rights. And what does that mean? That means that for the very first time in history, uh, we are seeing provinces, uh, BC and Manitoba in particular, uh, but we're also seeing federal departments having to commit to Indigenous rights. I was just training a series of judges in Manitoba recently uh, who have never been trained on Indigenous rights. Most of them have no idea what it means or the impact that it involves. And so for the first time are including that in things like criminal trials or in property trials. So what does that mean? That means that we're seeing First Nations for the first time with their outstanding treaty claims, having those embodied or embedded within negotiations with the federal government. That's where cows and plows comes in. That's where the raise of the annuities are the issues that, you know, five dollars just don't going to cut it anymore. Uh, we're talking about back in 1871, five dollars a year's annuity. Uh, what does that look like today? Well, that involves billions of dollars that are owed to First Nations because simply we have rights over the land and for the very first time in history, Canadian law must recognize that right. Just never mind all the other things with child welfare, uh, with all the other things involving Indigenous language rights and so on. I mean, all of those things are now on the table and you can't turn it back even if there is a change in government and a change in leadership at the federal level. Bringing it full circle there, that was a lot to cram into one week's panel. Uh, Niga and Jennifer, thanks to you both. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.